Welcome to our AWS S3 series where we talk about everything S3. In this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how you can connect an S3 put event to a Lambda function in Python. We are going to be building a small calculator system that does addition and multiplication. It then prints out the results of the calculations as well as return the counts of the calculations, that is, how many addition or multiplication calculations have been done. For this application, we'll have a Lambda function, a JSON file, and an S3 packet. The Lambda function will be called calc operations. This function will process the file called operations JSON to compute the result. The S3 bucket is called NKT Studio's calc storage, and it is where the JSON file will be uploaded. Remember, your bucket name cannot contain spaces or capital letters. As soon as the upload happens, S3 will give out a put event which will trigger our Lambda function, which will then process the contents of the operations.json file. The JSON file, as well as the Lambda function used in this demonstration, are linked in the description below. Now let's just log into the AWS console. As you can see, I'm in the new 2022 console home. If you want to revert to the legacy console, just click on Actions and then select Revert to Legacy Console Home. Now we need to launch the Lambda console. So if you don't have it under recently visited, just go to the search bar and search for Lambda. Select it and then click on it to open it. Click on create function to create a new function and then make sure author from scratch is selected. Under basic information on the function name, let's fill our function name calc operations. On the runtime, select Python 3.9. On the architecture, I'm going to leave the default x86-64 selected, although ARM64 is cheaper. Under permissions, expand change default execution role. Now we have to create a role that has S3 get object permissions. We could do it manually, but in this instance, I'm going to use the AWS policy templates as there is already a role with the permissions that we need. So select create a new role from AWS policy templates. Let's give our role a name and I'm going to call it S3 event access role. Then select the policy templates dropdown and search for S3. Select the one that says Amazon S3 read only permissions. After you select it, click on create function to create our Lambda function. As you can see, our function calc operations was successfully created. Make sure the code tab is selected and then you can paste the Lambda code provided in the description below here. You can then skip to the next section where we set up S3. Otherwise, let's code the Lambda function together. So we're going to be starting off from the base Lambda function template. We're going to need the JSON and Porto3 libraries, so we need to import them. As you can see, JSON is already imported, so we just need to import Porto3. So just type in import Porto3. We then need to create a Porto3 S3 client object. We will do this inside the Lambda handler method. So just get inside the Lambda handler method and delete this comment to do implement. We're going to put our comment, that is number one, create an S3 client object. And to do that, just give it a variable name, S3, and then assign it to Porto3 dot client and then inside brackets you put in s3 we are going to return from the lambda the number and type of calculations done back to the calling application so let's add the counters here just going to put a comment here for the second thing that we're going to do which is counters for the calculations i'm going to start with the addition count and set it to zero. I'm just gonna copy this. And then paste it. And then change addition to multiplication. Now we need to get the bucket name from this event object that is passed into our Lambda function. Our variable for the bucket name is going to be bucket name. Just keeping it simple. And then we put in the event. 
And then from the event, we want to get the records. And then from the records, we want to get the first item, which is zero. And then from there, we want to get the S3 item. And inside the S3 item, we want to get the bucket item. Then from the bucket item, we need to get the value of the name key. If you want to learn more about the S3 event message structure, check out the link to the documentation that I put on the screen as well as in the description below. Just as we got the bucket name, we also need to get the file name. So the fourth item we're going to do is to get the file name. I'm just going to copy this because it's similar. And then instead of bucket name, I'm going to call our file name the key. So everything is going to be the same up to S3. But now instead of bucket, we need to get the object item. And inside the object item, we need to get the value of the key item. We now have the bucket name as well as the file name. Now we need to get the file from S3. I'm going to put this code in a try catch statement as something might go wrong while we're trying to get the file from S3. So I'll just put in my try statement. I'll just move this comment inside the try catch. And then to fetch the file from S3, our variable is gonna be response. So I'm gonna save the response that we get from S3 in this variable called response. And then I'm gonna use the S3 client and then dot get object and then open brackets and inside there we need to pass in the bucket which we're going to pass in bucket name and we also need to pass in the key and we're going to pass in our key variable here we have used the bucket name and the key which is the file name that we got above in these two lines once we have the file we now have to deserialize the file's contents. We need to create a variable that will store the deserialized object. I'm going to call mine contents. And then we're going to pass it the response that we got above. And then inside the response, we're going to pass in the body. And then we're going to read the body and then decode it. Now we need to pass the deserialized contents into a dictionary. And to do that, we simply say data, that is the variable that will contain our dictionary, and then use json.loads, and then pass in the deserialized object, which is stored in our variable contents. Now let's print the dictionary so that we can see it in the logs. So this is just going to use the Python print method and we're going to just pass in our dictionary which is stored in the data variable. Now we can process the dictionary and do our calculations. So we're going to create a variable named calculations and then we're going to assign it to the dictionary data and then inside the dictionary we want the item calculations. Remember our operations.json file is a calculations item which you are passing in here. Now let's loop through the records in the dictionary. So we're just going to use a for statement here. So for record in the calculations. Each record can have an operation of either addition or multiplication. So we need to put an if statement to filter the record type so that we can apply the right kind of calculation. So if record and then operation is equals to addition
then we're going to do the addition calculation. So the first thing that we need to do is to update the addition count. So addition count plus equals to one. And then we need to get the first number, which we're going to store in first num. Then we need to get the second number, which I'll store in this variable, second num. So now that we have the first number and the second number, let's do our addition and store the result in a variable called result. So this is going to be result is equals to first num plus second num. Now I'm just going to print a summary of what we've done. So just type in print and then this was addition of full colon and then curly brackets to represent the first number and then other curly brackets for the second number and then equal sign and then curly brackets to represent the result. And then I'm just going to say dot format and then open brackets. And then first num, second num, and then result. So this was for addition. I'm going to do the same for multiplication. So I'm just going to copy this. And then paste it. And then I'm going to change the if to an elif. And then I'm going to change addition to multiplication. And then I'm going to change this operation from plus to multiplication. And then also change this addition to multiplication. Now let's close off the try case statement. So I'm just going to come here. And then type in accept exception as e. And then I'm just going to print the exception. Now let's just modify our return statement to finish the lambda function. So I'm going to leave status code as is, but I'm going to modify the body. So just delete what is in here and then put in addition operations full colon space and then open and close curly brackets put a comma and then put in multiplication operations full colon and then open and close curly brackets and then we're going to put in dot format open bracket and then we're going to put in addition count comma and then multiplication count our lambda function is complete so just scroll up and then click on deploy to save and deploy the changes as you can see we got the confirmation that our lambda function calc operations was successfully updated i just want you to notice here that we do not have any triggers an s3 trigger will be added when we set up the s3 event notification we could do it here, but we're going to do it from the S3 side. Obviously, the next thing that we need to do is to set up S3. So open the S3 console and to do that, just click on services. You can then search for S3 here, but I already have the shortcut here. Right click and then open a new tab. When the S3 console opens up, just click on create bucket to create our bucket. I'm going to name this bucket NKT Studios Calc Storage. And I'm going to leave all the other options on default. So scroll down and then click on Create Bucket. As you can see, our bucket NKT Studios Calc Storage was successfully created. And if I scroll down to verify, here is my bucket. Now go into the bucket, select properties, 
and then scroll down to event notifications. As you can see, we don't have any event notifications. This is where we're going to connect our S3 put event to our Lambda function. So just click on create event notification, which will give us a screen where we can set the event notification details. When it opens up, just give it the event name. I'm going to put mine as S3 put. I'm not going to put in a prefix, but for the suffix, put dot JSON. This ensures that if someone uploads any other file type which is not a dot JSON, such as a dot CSV or image file, our Lambda function will not be invoked. On the event types, I just want our Lambda function to be triggered on the put events. So I'm just gonna select put here. And then scroll down to destination and then select Lambda function if it is not already selected. So just scroll down to see the other options. And then under Lambda function, choose the Lambda function that we just created. So for me, I only have one Lambda function in this region. So it's going to be calc operations. And then click on save changes to save the changes. Our event notification S3 put was successfully created. And if you scroll down to event notifications, you'll see the event notification that we just created. At this point, we are ready to upload our file and see if our Lambda function will process it. But before we do that, let's just go back and check if an S3 trigger was added to our Lambda function. So just go back to Lambda. As you can see, there's currently no trigger. I just have to refresh. And as you can see, I now have an S3 trigger. If you select it, you'll see that it points to the S3 bucket that we just created. And if you expand details, you'll see that it is referencing our event notification S3 put. Now let's go ahead and upload our operations.json file to the S3 bucket. So go back to S3 and then scroll up and then select objects. Click on upload and then you can add files or folders. We're just going to add the operations.json file. So just open the file location and then drag it here. And then click on upload to upload it. Our upload succeeded, so our file is now in S3. This will have resulted in an S3 put event notification being created, which then fires our Lambda function calc operations. To verify this, let's go back to our Lambda function. Once there, just click on monitor. I just need to refresh this page. Make sure matrix is selected and then scroll down to see the graphs. As you can see, we have a blue dot here, which represents the single invocation of our Lambda function when we put the operations.json file in the S3 bucket. Now let's click view logs in CloudWatch to see if we got the correct printouts. I'm just gonna expand this one. As you can see, we got the correct printouts. as they match with the values in our operations.json file. You can see here for addition, the first number is one and the second number is two. And for multiplication, the first number is three and the second number is three. If you enjoyed this video, please do check out my AWS Ultimate Essentials course linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.